Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about an easy problem from lead code. The problem name is divisor game. So let's start. The problem statement goes like this, that Alice and Bob takes turn to play a game. And Alice start the game first. Now what the actual game is, that initially there is a number N on a chalkboard. On each player's turn, that player makes a move. Okay, now what's the move? Choosing any X, such that X is between 0 and N, non-inclusive of both of these bounds such that n mod x is equal to 0 which means that x should be a multiple of n okay now what you will do is that you will take x whatever number you have chosen you will subtract that x from the n itself such that n keeps on decreasing and eventually you will keep on playing this game until any player is unable to do this particular operation and whoever player is unable to do this particular operation that choosing a x between 0 and n and subtracting it, subtracting it from n will lose and the other player will win. Now your overall problem is that return true if Alice wins the game, assuming that both the players are playing optimally. So it, it is a game theory problem and generally try for any game theory problems, try to find out any pattern. Okay, because in generally all the game theory problems, you have to find out a pattern of how all the players are playing inside this game. Okay, and let's try to understand the pattern with different examples okay so what you will do is that we have n from 1 to 1000 okay so let's try to find out for n from 1 equal to let's say 5 okay and then try to find out how much patterns you can form formulate out so let's say for n equal to 1 we'll start with first so n equal to 1 means that alice will start first now alice will start first and what you can understand from here is if i just move to the let's say let's say the, the rules of this particular game alice in the first move will choose a number between 0 and 1 non-inclusive 0 and 1 so there is no number actually and thus alice cannot do a move and in that case alice will lose so the answer for this is false so for n equal to 1 the answer is false because alice will not do a move. okay so answer will be depending on whether alice will win or not for n equal to 2 the overall thing is that you have to find out that like alice will start the game first she can choose any number between 0 and let's say not 0 let's say from 0 plus 1 that is from 1 till n minus 1 that is 1 so from 1 till 1 she can choose any number such that that particular number should be a multiple of n so obviously 1 is a multiple of let's say 2 because uh, like obviously it's a multiple because 1 can divide 2 so the other thing is that she can choose 1 as a multiple of 2 and then subtract 1 from 2 so now n will eventually become 1 Okay, and Alice has done her chance. Now Bob's turn will be there. And because as you know that if we are on n equal to 1, the player will not move. Whatever player is on n equal to 1, that will not win because I cannot do any move. And thus Alice has done his chance. So Alice will win because Bob is losing. So answer for this is true. So the one thing you are trying to understand from here is that I have to somehow find factors of n. That is one thing. So we have to find, find out factors because uh, we have to find out this condition. So factors is important. Find out factors. And the next thing also, and the thing is that because the constraints are small, and we are using the previous values, whatever answer we, I am getting, it depends upon previous values. So all of these three things are pointing me towards dynamic programming because constraints are small, previous values are used. And we have to use factors. So all of them are like pointed towards dynamic programming. That is why we will use dynamic programming to solve this particular problem now. So what we'll do is that let's now take any random n. So let's say I'm n equal to 6. Okay. Now Alice chance will be there. So Alice, what, what she will try to do is that because she wants to win, she somehow wants to make Bob lose. Okay. So what you will do is that you will have Alice will somehow subtract from n, what n equal to 6, a number that is a multiple of 6. So what all are the multiple of 6? You can find out 1, okay, and uh, 2, and 3. Okay, so you will find out all the multiple of 6, excluding 0 and n itself. So you will find out 1, 2, and 3. Now, if Alice wants to win, she will move to either, like if she subtract 1, she will move to a state to n equal to 5. Because then Alice will, if I, Alice choose this number as a factor of 6 and subtract uh, like let's say x equal to 1, then Alice will move or give Bob a state of n equal to 5. If she chooses 2, then Bob will be given a state 
of n equal to 4 and the other case will be n equal to 3. So these are the three states Bob can land if Alice will choose any number among all of these three things. Now because what we know that if somehow the other person lands on a false then that person will fail. Why? Because as you can see this false in the table. So we are now creating a DP table that will show that if I land upon any of these states. So I have already calculated for these states because I am doing a DP now. DP means that I, I will gradually move from one state to another. I will calculate as for n equal to 1, n equal to 2. Why? Because every state is now depending upon its previous state values. So for n equal to 6, I have to somehow know the value for n equal to 1, sorry, n equal to 5, n equal to 4 and n equal to 3. So I am using the previous values to calculate or deduce the answer for this. And if any of these three values, if any of these three values is equivalent to, let's say false, then Alice will win. Why? Because then she is making Bob land on these states which is giving false. So Bob will lose and which eventually means that Alice will win. So if any of them turns out to be false, then uh, like Alice will choose that total number and make Bob land on a state that is equal to false and Bob will lose from that state. But if all of them are true, so no matter which number Alice will choose, all of these states will lead to Bob winning state and thus will Bob will win. So I hope you understand what is the overall idea here is that you will find out all the factors of what number Alice is on and depending upon that you will find out whether all the factors if you subtract it from n the other n's which comes out any of them is false then the answer is that uh, uh, Alice will win else Bob will win and you will calculate out for all n from like let's say n equal to let's say from 3 because from n equal to 1 we know that the answer will be false n equal to the answer will be true so from n equal to 3 we will start calculate it out and for all the previous factors you can calculate it out and for other new states you can use the previous state values that's the whole idea for this particular problem let us move on the code part now so we have created an array that is a dp array that will store all the answers of side 1, 1005 because the maximum is 1000 then for answer equal to let's say answer equal to 1 the answer will be 0 why? Because in that state 0 means that Alice will uh, lose and uh, like say for answer equal to 2 which means the second state which means, which means n equal to 2 Alice will win so answer will be 1. So 1 denotes true that Alice will win and 0 denotes Alice will uh, lose. Okay. Now we will do a for loop. Now for this i equal to 3 to i equal to n. Okay. This i eventually exactly means that I am calculating for each state for each n. n equal to 3, n equal to 4, n equal to 5 and so on. So this is for each state this i. Now for each state I will calculate out its factors. So it's a very simple way to calculate out any factors of anything is just use a for loop from 1 till all the j and what you will do is that I will go till the under root of let's say whatever n I have. So what you eventually I want to find out is let's say I want to find out the factors of n. So I will do a for loop from i equal to 1 till i equal to under root of n because all the factors of n I want to find out. So under root of n means that i into like let's say I'm doing a for loop using j. So j into j less than equal to i which eventually means that j is less than equal to under root of n. n is i here because I'm doing for every n. Okay. That is how that is the little code you have to understand here. And now you're doing a for loop. Now for so now j this is i and I just want to check out it whether j is a multiple of i. If this is true, which means that now we have found out a factor of let's say any i number i on and what you'll do is that if i minus j because it's a factor, I will take i th number i am on, let's say the i nth state i am on. So i minus j because I'm taking this number, so I'm subtracting out it from j and if it turns out to be 0, which, which eventually means that if I if I have only any n and if I subtract out the factor, let's say a and if the subtracted state that I lead to, let's say this is answer is false which means that it is zero in that state alice will win so the answer of ith number will be one and if all the factors doesn't make alice win if all of them are true then this will not be make like it will not be like initialized with one it will be zero because the vector answer is initialized to zero with all the states so all the states will be calculated out for all the n because it's a follow for all the states in the end the answer will be stored in answer of n because the n state we want to wrap it up okay that's our logic for this particular problem as well Nothing much complicated here as well, but you just have to understand how we can find out the factors of any ith number and for every state, how we can use the previous state values to calculate out the current state value. So as you can see the time complexity and the space complexity, let's talk about that. 
स्पेस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ लेट्स से ओ ऑफ एन अरे ओके दो आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ सेगमेंट वन ऑफ 1000 साइज ओनली बट इट कैन आल्सो डिपेंड अपॉन द साइज यू कैन क्रिएट अ लाइक दिस आंसर ऑफ एन आल्सो द टोटल डिपेंड्स अपॉन यू सो दिस इज अ फॉर लूप नेस्टेड फॉर लूप नाउ यू माइट थिंक दैट दिस इज ओ ऑफ एन स्क्वायर इट्स नॉट बिकॉज़ दिस इज डूइंग लेट्स से uh under root jumps so this is log n so o of n log n okay that is the time velocity for this particular for loops okay these two not are directly nested for loop because this is here this is making it log n okay and this is the overall time velocity and the space complexity for this particular problem as well and that's it if you still have a doubt you can mention in the comment box for this particular video i will see you in the next video coding and bye